In this uh, video homework guide, my plan is to cover more problems that have to do with modeling and optimization. And I'll, I will start off uh, with example number three. And for example number three, I have an open top box with the square base with volume 13.5 inches cubed. And I need to find the dimensions of the box that will minimize the material required to build it. Okay, so uh, for part one, I need to label the diagram. So this is an open top box with a square base. So since I have a square base, um, the bottom length and the bottom width will be the same. So uh, this red distance right here, let's call that X. And this red distance right here, that will be the same because we have a square base. So that'll be X and X. And then finally, I need to label the height. So this height of this cube will be Y. So that's how you would label the diagram. Um, for part two, you need to find a derivative equation. Okay, so let me just erase all this. And for the derivative equation, you, um, you want to take a look at the very last part of the problem. I want to find the dimensions of the box that will minimize the material required to build it. So if you're looking for material required to build it, you want the material around the box. So if you're looking for material around the box, that is surface area. Okay, so surface area is finding the area of all the individual pieces and then adding them up all together. So when you have a cubic, when you have an open top box uh, for this particular problem, you need to break it down. So there is a bottom piece. So this is how you would break down surface area. There's a bottom piece right there and the bottom is just a square. So the area of a square is length times width. So X times X is X squared. And then you have several sides. Okay, so let me just erase the blue now. And if I put the blue color over here, this is one of the sides right here, right? So that side has area of X times Y. And if you think about this, there's actually four sides. So there's that blue side, there's, that, there's, there's this other side right here, and clearly this blue side, the area there is just X times Y, right? X times Y. And then we also have the back here in yellow, that's also X times Y. And then we also have the front, which is X times Y. So we have four sides of equal area. So four sides of equal area and the area of one side is just X times Y, which is, um, or which is like length times width. So four times X, Y or four X, Y. Now I don't care about the top, right? Um, usually a cube has six sides, a bottom, a top and four sides, but we don't care about the top because the question tells you that you have an open top box. So this right here would be your derivative equation right there. And we do want to take its derivative because eventually, if I look at the problem again, I want to minimize the problem. So if you want to minimize this, you have to take its derivative. But the problem is there's another variable right here, which is y. So for our third part is we need to get rid of that y by using the helper equation. Okay, so let's take a look at the original problem here. And for the helper equation, you generally need to look for the number that's given to you. So the only number that's given to me is 13.5 inches cubed. So you have to ask yourself, how do you relate the 13.5 inches cubed with the variables X and Y? Okay, so the um, equation that would relate the sides and the height and 13.5 inches cubed is the volume of a cube. So the volume of a cubed is length times width times height. And the volume here is gonna be 13.5. The length and the width are just X and X. So X times X is X squared. So X times X is X squared. And the height here is just Y. Okay. And then eventually I need to isolate for this Y there. So if I isolate for Y, Y would equal to 13.5 divided by X squared. Okay. So that Y is this Y over here. Or sorry, this Y is that Y over there. And if I just rewrite my new uh, derivative uh, equation here, area would now equal to x squared. So this part right here just comes down, plus, plus 4x, and now that y would become 13.5 divided by x squared. Now, before I take the derivative, it's probably in your best interest to simplify your derivative equation. So let's go ahead and simplify this now. Area would equal to x squared plus. Now if I do uh, this four times 13.5, four times 13.5 is going to be uh, 54. And then I have an x on the top here and an x on the bottom here. So if you think about that, that's the same thing as x over x squared, which is just one over x. 
So, you're, so maybe you're thinking to write that as 54 over x, which is correct, but I would go ahead and modify that slightly. I would write that as 54 times x to the power minus one. The reason why I do that is because uh, your derivative will be much easier to take if you write it as 54 x to the power minus one. Okay, let's go ahead and find the derivative now. So a prime, a prime would equal to, uh, this would be a two x. And then I'll use the power rule here. So this would be a negative one times 54. So negative 54 x to the power minus two. Now with this x to the power minus two, I would write that as divided by x to the power two, because that would make the next step a little bit easier when you're taking the, um, when you're solving for x here, because if you want to minimize anything, you take your derivative and set that equal to zero. And uh, if you put the x squared on the bottom here, the next step is a little bit easier to figure out here. Okay, so let's do that. And then I would take this part right here and move it to the other side. So now this is just all algebra now. So 54 over x squared equals to two x. And then I would take this x, I would take, uh, sorry, I would take uh, this uh, x squared here and I would multiply with that x. So now I, I would have 54 equals to, equals to two times x cubed. And then you can divide both sides by two. Uh, 54 divided by two is gonna be 27. So 27 equals to x cubed. And we actually get a very nice number here because uh, if I cube root both sides, the cube root of 27 is three. All right, so x would equal to three. All right, so what does that mean? Uh, let's go back to the original problem here. And uh, so basically what that means is uh, these x's right here, the sides or the bottom lengths are gonna be three and three. And in order to find the uh, y value, I mean, you can just use your helper equation right there. And uh, this would be a 13.5 over three squared, which equals to y and 13.5 uh, divided by three squared is gonna be 1.5. So the values of x are three and three and y would be 1.5 inches. So let me just uh, erase this now and let's put the 1.5 here. So these are the dimensions that will minimize the material required, the material required to build this object. Okay, so some of these word problems, they are quite long. So that's it for that particular question. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, next one here. Um, it's another similar box type of question here. So um, a, a container company is designing a square base rectangular box with the top. So this one's uh, a little bit different. We do have a top for this particular problem, but it's still square based. And um, it's gonna have a volume of 256 feet cubed. And then we have some, um, cost figures here. So the cost of the top is 15 cents per feet squared. And the bottom is five cents per feet squared. And the sides are 2.5 cents per feet squared. And I want to find the dimensions of the box that will minimize the total cost. Okay, so since this is a uh, square based uh, problem here, let's go ahead and draw another square based object here. And what that means is uh, this length right here is going to be x. And that's going to be x as well because it's square based. And this height here will be y. Okay, so that's part number one. That's how you label the diagram using the variables x and y. Uh, part two is you want to uh, create your derivative, your derivative equation. Okay, now for your derivative equation, you have to take a look at the, the last sentence here. I mean, we want to find, let me put this in yellow here. I want to find the dimensions of the box that will minimize the total cost. Now, if you want to minimize the total cost, basically you're looking at how much does it cost for the sides, the top and the bottom. And uh, in order to do that, you know, we want to find the material it takes to go around the sides and the top and the bottom. So we need a area, an area equation, but the area equation is also affiliated with the cost, right? So if you look at the cost of the top here, it's 15 cents per feet squared, five cents per feet squared and 2.5 cents per feet squared. Notice that these symbols have to do with area, right? So let's go ahead and find a derivative expression or a derivative equation for the area of this cube, and then we'll uh, incorporate the total cost or the cost for the top, bottom, and the sides. Okay, so the area, okay, let's take a look at the bottom here. 
the bottom is going to be x times x, right? So this bottom piece right here, uh, that's going to be x times x, which is x squared plus. And what's the area of the top? Well, the top is this piece right here, which is also a square. So the area of the top is going to be x times x times x, which is x squared. And then let's take a look at the sides. All right, so how many sides do we have? We have four sides, right? So let me just kind of erase this here. The four sides are this side right here, which is x times y. Then we have this back side right here, which is also x times y. And then we have this side right here, which is x times y. And then finally, I have the front piece, which is x times y. So since there's four of them, there's four sides, it'd be plus four times x times y. So that's the uh, expression for the surface area, right? But we want to minimize the total cost. So if I want to change this into a total cost, I need to start looking at how much does it cost for the sides and the top and the bottom here. So if I take a look at this part right here, it's 15 cents for the top. Okay, so if this is the top right here, this is gonna be 15 cents per feet squared, right? So I gotta take my x squared and multiply that by 15. So this would be 15 x squared. And then it's five cents for the bottom, right? So the bottom right here is five cents per feet. So I take this guy and multiply that by five. So this will be five x squared, and then plus the 15 x squared. And then it tells you that it's 2.5 cents per feet squared for the sides. So I take my sides here and I gotta multiply that by 2.5. So this will be 2.5 times 4xy. And that right there is my derivative equation. And you should go ahead and simplify this as much as you can. So 2.5 times 4, if I multiply that out, that's going to be 10. So this will be a 10xy. And then 5 plus uh, 15, that's going to be 20x squared. So this is my total cost equation right there. Okay, so that is my uh, total cost, which is my derivative equation, and eventually I want to find the derivative of that, but the problem, once again, is there's another y variable right here. So now what I need to do is I need to go back to the original problem, and I need to create a helper equation. So step three, I want to find a helper equation. All right, so um, let's erase all this, and if I look at the problem now, I mean, I've used the 15 cents, I've used the 5 cents, I've used the 2.5 cents already. Uh, the only number that's left over is this 256 feet cubed. And the uh, now I need to find an equation that relates the 256 feet cubed along with the variables x, x, and y. And the equation that relates all of that is the volume of the cube. So volume equals to length times width times height. My length and my width are x times x, so that's x squared and my height is gonna be y. And that equals to 256 feet cubed. Okay, and if I go ahead and simplify this, uh, y would equal to 256 divided by x squared. And as you can see, uh, this y right here matches up with that y, and now I can do a substitution step here, and that will allow me to have one variable. So this would be 20x squared plus 10x, and then I would substitute y as 256 all over x squared. So very similar to the previous problems. Okay, and before I take the derivative, let's go ahead and simplify this. So this will be 20x squared. Sorry, my pen's just uh, jamming up here, so let's just rewrite that. So that'll be 20x squared plus, all right, now ask yourself what's 10 times 256? Well, that's going to be uh, 2,560, and then I have x divided by x squared. So if I do that on the side here, x over x squared, I mean that is one over x, so technically you could definitely put the x on the bottom here. You could do that, but I don't recommend that because your next step will be the derivative. I would write the, that part as just x to the power minus one. And then that way your derivative will be much easier to take. All right, so let's go ahead and take the derivative now because now we just have one variable here. So finding the derivative is much easier. So I'll, I'll call this TC prime equals two. All right, using the power rule now, two times 20 is 40, so 40x. And then using the power rule again, uh, negative one times 
and negative one times uh, 2,560 will be negative 2,560 x to the power of minus two. Okay, so now we take our derivative and if we want to, well in this particular problem we have to minimize. So if you wanna minimize or maximize, your derivative needs to be set equal to zero. And in order to do that, I will rewrite this as 40x minus 2,560. And then this part right here, this x to the power of minus two, I would write that on the bottom as x to the power of two. And then I would take this entire piece here and move that to the other side. So this will be 2,560 all over x squared equals to 40x. And now the algebra is a little bit easier to solve. So x squared times x, that's gonna be 40x cubed equals to 2,560. And then I'll divide this both sides by 40. I'll continue on over here. And 2,560 divided by um, 40 there uh, gives you 64. So 64 equals to uh, x cubed. And now this is looking pretty nice here because I can now uh, take the cube root of both sides. And then the cube root of 64 is gonna give you, sorry, it's cube root both sides here. So x would now would equal to four. All right, so the value of x would be four. And now we need to go ahead and find the value of y now. And we can probably do that using our helper equation. So once again, uh, x equals to four now. And if I go all the way back here to my helper equation here, uh, I would now have 256 divided by four squared equals to y. And if I do that, I believe I get 16 here. Okay, uh, in order to kind of finish off uh, this problem here, the question is asking for the uh, dimensions here. So if I go back here and find the dimensions, so the dimensions would be uh, four by four by 16. I believe those are the uh, dimensions that will help minimize the total cost. All right, so that was a pretty long problem, but hopefully, but it was still very similar to the very first problem that we did there. So uh, make sure you practice this question if you're still stuck on this particular problem. The algebra with this problem and the previous problem are very similar. Okay, uh, let's do one more optimization problem and then we'll finish uh, this video guide. Uh, for question number three, I have a oil can and it's shaped like a right circular cylinder with the top and it has a volume of 1,000 milli milliliters. And I wanna find the dimensions of the can that will minimize the material required to build it. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, label this diagram here. So um, actually, I think the diagram is labeled. Um, we're not using X and Y anymore. We're actually just using R and H. Okay, so the diagram is labeled. Uh, part two, I need to find the derivative equation. Okay, and in order to find the derivative equation, I need to take a look at the very last sentence here. So I wanna minimize the material required to build it. Okay, so if the question tells you to find the material required, that's another way of, of finding the area, right? So if you want to um, build something, you gotta find the area of the material around the object. So that is measured in area or surface area there. And uh, the surface area for a right circular cylinder is gonna be two pi r squared. Okay, so you kinda of have to know this. Uh, this is the area of a circle. And the reason why there's a two here because there's two circles, one on the top and one on the bottom. So we, so the area would be the circles of the top and the bottom plus the area of the body. Now the area of the body, unfortunately in this video, I don't have time to derive the area of the body, but the body would have a area of two pi r h. And that is the surface area for any right circular cylinder, which is something that you see in a grade eight class when you're dealing with surface area. So the derivative equation for this particular problem is actually the surface area for a cylinder, which you can find in grade eight. Okay, so if I wanna minimize the material, I wanna find the derivative and set it equal to zero, but the problem is there's another h variable here, right? There's a different variable h, all right? And in order to get rid of that, I need to set up my helper equation. Now, as I'm writing down helper equation here, uh, you should be looking at the problem and you should be looking for any numbers that we haven't used yet. And if I read this entire problem here, there's only one number that's given to us, which is 100 milliliters and it's a volume. So I need to find an equation that relates the radius, the height, 
and a volume of 1000 milliliters and that will be the volume of a cylinder and the volume of a cylinder is the bottom which is an area of a circle which is pi r squared and then I times it by the height which is h. All right, so this is the volume of a circular cylinder there, which you can, which you can find once again in the grade A curriculum. And the volume here is going to be 1,000. And I can leave this as pi r squared times by h. Okay, so let's go ahead and isolate for h here. So this is uh, very similar to all the previous problems. So h would equal to 1,000 divided by pi r squared. Okay, and then I can take this h here and replace it with that h in my derivative expression there. All right, so if I do that, area would equal to 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r, and then my h will now be 1,000 divided by pi r squared, close the bracket, and then I can erase my blue colors there. And then let's go ahead and simplify this before I find my derivative, before I take the derivative here. Okay, so this will be 2 pi r squared plus, now this is just all algebra here now, so uh, the pi's there cancel. Um, I have an r here and an r squared, so um, I guess mathematically you have an r on the bottom, and then two times a thousand is gonna be two thousand. Okay, so that's how you would simplify that. Then you are taking your derivative, and um, before you take your derivative, let's go ahead and write that in terms of a power here. So before I take my derivative, let's rewrite this one last time here as plus 2,000 times r to the power of minus one, and now we're ready to take the derivative now. So this would be using the power rule, two times two is four, so four pi r, and then using this power rule, that would be negative 2,000 r to the power of minus two. And then I take my derivative and I set it equal to zero, just like all the previous problems. And I would take this guy here and I would write that whole thing here as divided by r squared. And let's erase that. This one's a little bit easier to uh, work with. And then I'll take this entire guy and move it to the other side. So that's gonna be 2000 over r squared equals to four pi r. And then I, I can take my r squared here, times with that r. Okay, so we're getting very close now. So 2000 equals to four pi r cubed. And then and I can divide both sides by four pi. Okay, so a little bit of number crunching here. Uh, if I take my 2000 divided by four, that's gonna be 500. So 500 over pi equals to, well those cancel off, that cancels off, gives me r cubed. And then I can take the cube root of both sides finally. And at this stage, you would definitely go to your calculator here and this would give you a value of 5.4193 centimeters. And if you want to find your height now, go back to your helper equation, which is over here. So this would be 1000 divided by pi times by radius, which is 5.4193 squared equals to my height. So all I'm doing now is I'm just taking, um, I'm just taking uh, this number here that we found and we're just plugging that in over there. And I would go to your calculator here and the calculator states that you get 10.839 centimeters. All right, so those are the, the values of H and R that would help you um, uh, minimize the material required to build this object here. Okay, so definitely there's a lot of algebra with these kind of problems, so make sure you do take your time to work through the problems.